notes are about function notation. First of all, what is a function? Hopefully you remember from Algebra 1 um, what a relation is. A relation is just a set of points, x, y. There might be a rule, an input, and an output. Um, it might just be a scatter plot. It might just be a picture on a, gra a graph of something. Um, but that's all the relation is, just a set of points. So here's a possible picture of a relation. Maybe there's a point here, a point here, maybe another one right there. Maybe there's a bunch right here. Maybe there's another one here. Maybe there's some more right here. So relation can really be anything. A function is a special type of relation. A function is a relation where each possible input yields exactly one output. So notice the picture that I drew of just any old relation. This particular relation is not a function because if this was our x-axis and this was our y-axis, then take a look at this input right here. It yields this output as well as this output right there. So this is not a function because there's an input that gives two outputs. Here's another example of a relation that is not a function. It's a picture of a circle for the same reason. Again, let's say I inputted this value right there. I'm not even assigning numbers on the axes. We don't even really need them. I just want to sort of look at this um, these as pictures for now. This input gives that as an output as well as whatever y value that might be, not a function. What about this one? This one actually is a function. Because there's no x value, there's no input that's going to give more than one output. You might argue that there's certain outputs that were given by two different inputs, but that's okay. So one thing you might have heard to test to see if a picture is a function, a graph or a relationship is a function, is by the vertical line test. If you pass a vertical line through your graph, um, kind of taking your pencil and move it horizontally, if you ever touch more than one point on the graph at the same time, then it's not a function. Notice right here that's touching two points, not a function but that picture on the right is a function. So now that we know what functions are, what is function notation? Let f of x equal 2x plus 1. Here I've defined a function using, func using function notation. This f right here, that's just the name of the function. I could have picked g of x, or h of x, or w of x, or smiley face of x. It doesn't matter. This x right here is representing our input. And so is this x right here. And this 2x plus 1 business, that's our rule. That says what we do to our input. So you might have seen functions described as, say, y equals 2x plus 1, that's just assigning a name for your output. You're calling it y. In this case, we're calling the output f of our input. It's allowing us to describe our outputs as a function of our inputs. It actually becomes really handy. So let's say I wanted to know f of 3. That means, what is our output when our input is 3? Anywhere you see the x, replace it with the 3 using our function rule, 2 times 3 plus 1. Well, that gives us, what does that give us? 7. Let's try another one. What is f of negative 1? Replace x with negative 1. We get negative 1. 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Notice, we actually don't even have to use numbers as our input. I can say, what is f of a plus 4? 
a plus 4 is just some binomial expression. We can plug that in for x. 2 times our input plus 1. That was our rule. And of course, if I wanted to, I could distribute this 2 and combine like terms, and we would get 2a plus 8 plus 1 would give us 2a plus 9. So this is really handy because now I can replace um, x not just with numbers but with, you know, expressions. Um, and it's very helpful. Um, let's look at um, another function. How about g of x equals x squared? Here I've picked a different name. I've called it g and a much different rule. It says take our input and square it. So if I wanted g of 9, that would be 9 squared, which is 81. And let's see, so that's, we did a lot of plugging in, plugging in an input and finding the output. Let's go the other way. Solve for x if g of x equals 25. Notice this is not the same as asking for g of 25. I'm not looking for 25 squared. 25 here is not in the place of the input. It's in the place of the output where the rule was. So that's saying, what number did I square to get 25? So this is asking a different question. It's asking it in reverse. Instead of saying our input is 25, it's saying what was our input to get the output of 25? And now we have to do a little bit of thinking. What number squared gives you 25? You're probably thinking of this solution, which is one of them, but this is another one. Negative 5 squared also will give us 25. So this actually has two solutions. Notice it's a little bit trickier than just plugging in. We have to work backwards and think very carefully. So these are examples of using function notation with a rule or with a written symbolic expression. But we can also talk about functions based on their picture or their graph. Um, let's actually graph x squared. So here I have a blue familiar with what the graph of x squared looks like, g of x equals x squared. Um, and let's see, we can actually plot some points here. So I know that this must be the point 1, 1, negative 1, 1. This must be 4, 3, 9. So I guess we're not really to scale here. And we can even investigate values on this picture with function notation. If I wanted to know g of negative 1, I would look negative 1 instead of, I don't necessarily have a equation. I mean, I guess here I do, but if I didn't have this equation, I could just look for negative 1 on our x-axis and say, what was our output? And I can actually read that our output was 1 without actually having to plug in. I can just use the picture. Same thing for going backwards. If we wanted to solve g of x equals 4. Remember, that does not mean g of 4. I'm not going to plug in 4. I'm going to now look for 4 on the output, on the y-axis. And notice there are two places where the inputs give us an output of 4, right here and right here. And those two values were x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. So that's an example of how we could look at the graph instead of just plugging into an equation. Sometimes we might be given a graph instead of an equation. One last example of a representation of a function that you might see is in a table. So I'm going to pick a new function, h of x. And I'm just going to give you a list of points here. I'm not going to give you a rule or a picture. First of all, let's check to make sure this is a function. Are there, is there any input that's giving us two outputs? No. All of these inputs, they're all different, and they're all giving us um, only one output. So it is a function. 
How would we figure out what h of 5 is? Would we look for 5 in the input column or the output column? This is asking what is our output when our input is 5, when x is 5. So we would look in the x column. When x is 5, h of x was 4. That means h of 5 was 4. What if we wanted to solve for x if h of x equals 4? Well, you might just say, well, that's silly. We just did that. It's 5. But we have to be careful. There were two entries in the table that had an output of 4. So x could be 5 or negative 2. So we just have to be careful when we're going backwards. There might be more than one solution. Will there always be more than one? No, not necessarily. We just have to be very careful about the function we're given. It can be given to us in an equation. It can be given to us um, by a graph or by a table like we see here. Notice this table is not any specific function. I didn't make something that had a discernible pattern in it. I just kind of picked some points. Um, so it's important to become familiar with all three representations of functions and know how to read function notations, how to find outputs given an input, and how to find inputs given an output um, for each representation. Good luck!